Welcome to the fifth in our quadcopter building for beginners series two. Now in this one we're actually going to set up the radio in preparation for the next video where we're actually going to flash this guy with beta flight and we're then also going to do the configuration, make sure that things like the travel on the radio, sub trims are all fine, the motor all configured and then once we've done that and made for sure failsafe works we'll have a little hover in the back garden and then the final video in the series will be putting the top on this guy and actually connecting all the FPV equipment too. Now in the last video we connected up our X4R to the machine that's pretty straightforward and easy to do but now what we're going to do is grab hold of our Tyrannus radio and we're going to prepare a new model. Now the thing with the Tronus radio and there is an entire series on the channel for this guy already is that there are an awful lot of options and to show you all of the different things you could do to set up a multi-copter could take two or three hours. So we are going to create the most basic model here that we can then use in the video to set everything up. So I'm going to power the radio on Welcome to Tyrannus. and the first thing we're going to do is to press menu and then we're going to find an empty space in the menu. And we're going to press and hold the enter button and then click on create model. It will then run this little Lua script which will say what kind of model do you want. We're going to select a uh, quadcopter and then it's going to ask us to assign the different bits and pieces. Now by default it's going to assign the throttle to channel 1, page the roll or aileron to channel 2, Press page again, the pitch or elevator to channel 3, and finally the yaw or the rudder to channel 4. Press it again, it's going to say press long enter to confirm, and there we go. We have a new model, but there's some things that we're going to have to do to this little guy before we power up and start to configure things on the model itself. So we're going to press page, and we're going to give the model a name. Now this model is a GEP ZX5. So we're going to hit enter, press and hold for uppercase. And again, if this is something that you want to know more about, go and watch the video where we do all of the things with this menu because there is such an amount of power in here. That you, and there's also usually more than one way to do everything. It's worthwhile going and having a look. Okay, for the moment we're not going to bother with a model image, but we can add one of those. We will set a timer, I like setting a timer to be something like throttle start. Set it for something like about 8, 7 or 8 minutes. Okay, the next page then that we're going to go into is the heli setup, the swash, we don't want that. Flight modes are useful to actually display the flight modes that you're interested in. We might come back to that later. And then here we have throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder as our inputs. I'm going to add another one in here because we're going to want a mode switch. So we're going to call the input mod. We're going to highlight the switch and I'm going to select one of the three position switches that I like. That will work. So now we have a new input, we're going to press page again into our mixer and this time we're going to add that mod switch onto the output and I'm going to call this mode. Now we could actually add the switch directly onto the outputs but I like the ability to do things and this is kind of the way that I've always done it and it works really well for me. Okay there we go. So now if we just come out of that and page through, we'll look at the channel monitor, we can see that there is the throttle on channel 1, rudder is channel 4, elevator is channel 3, aileron is channel 2, and the mode switch in the corner, top left hand corner, is then selecting three positions, which will be fine, that's exactly what we need. We're going to press menu and page again, because we're just going to continue to set it up. We're going to page through, so we've got as far as the mixer, and then the outputs. We are going to have to come back in here to set the middle position and also the endpoints. What you tend to find on these radios is that, particularly the Tyrannuses, they overdrive the outputs. So what I'd be tempted to do is just go across here and drop the maximum down to about 97.5.
and Knight 7.5 because what you tend to find is that unfortunately the values on the channels will go way above 2000 if you don't do this and that can cause you problems now this I know we need to do this from many many times playing around with this so there we go okay next menu is curves we're not going to need one of those uh, global variables we're not going to bother with logical switches uh, we're not going to play with either but special functions we could set up so for the three flight modes that we currently have I'm going to have my bottom position as something like um, angle mode the middle position as horizon and the top as rate so what we can do in here is we can actually say while well, we have the switch selected put, use the same switch that we're using for the modes in the same position and then say play track and then pick the track from the sound files that are on the SD card and this time we're going to try and find something called angle mode let's see if we can find that that'll work here we go we'll exit out of that now when I put the switch in that back position the radio will tell me what it is. Now again, I can set that up for the middle position. Again, play track. This time it's going to be horizon mode. There we go. And then the top position, put the switch in that top position, is going to be acro mode. So again, play track. mode there we go okay so now in the back position it's going to be angle mode middle position horizon top mode acro mode so what we're going to do is we're going to set the uh, switch positions in beta flight to match that as well so now we've got that basic stuff set the next thing we do is we need to bind this radio to the receiver now I tend to like to bind these receivers um, off the model and then just make sure everything's working and what I'm going to do to kind of cheat to power it, I'm just going to use a little U5 volt U back here. I'm going to plug it into a little battery. That will give me the 5 volts I need to power it. Now to bind the receiver, um, this is an X series receiver, so we're going to have to go to menu page. If you just scroll up at the bottom of page two, you'll find the bind is all in here. We're going to highlight failsafe mode. And we're going to change failsafe mode to custom and set. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set at the moment all the failsafes to be in these positions. So as I move the throttle, you can probably see channel one moving. So I'm going to press enter. And also, I'm going to set the modes to be minus 100 as well. So that what will happen is if the receiver loses contact with the radio, the throttle will go to zero and it'll go into level mode and uh, it'll hopefully fall out of the sky gracefully. So now we've got that done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on D16, which is the right one. We're gonna select bind, it'll start to cheap. And then to bind, what we need to do, is we'll move that out of the way, we need to press and hold the fail safe button. You can see that in the bottom left hand corner while applying power. And that tells the receiver to bind to the radio. So, I'm going to try and keep that button pressed. It's a bit tricky. There we go. And then power it up. So you can see that there's a flashing red light and a green light. And that looks promising. Press enter again to come out of bind. Let's exit all the way out. Unplug the receiver. Wait a second or two, plug it back in. And there we have a connection. We can see the receiver voltage on the screen and we've got a nice, healthy, solid green light too. So that is all sorted. And if we unplug that. RSSI critical, telemetry yeah. lost. That's great, the radio is now upset because it lost a connection with the receiver, that's great. So now all we need to do is plug this cable from the flight controller back into the S bus connections. Again, being careful 
with the positive, negative and S bus connections. And now we can come back and in the next video we're going to connect this guy up to a PC. We're going to flash it with Betaflight. We're going to configure the radio. We'll reset those trims, make sure the travel's okay and all the controls are moving in the right direction. We'll set up the flight modes to match what we've just set up on the radio and then we'll be ready for our first test hover. And then the following video, we'll pop the top on this thing and put some FPV gear in here too. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.